Greetings, it's your soul, and here's a comment I have about the internet in general and its evolution and censorship and trolling and freedom and these kinds of things. So when I start, first started using social networks back in 2007, roughly, I was using some of the mainstream ones, but also was using one called tribe.net, which has since been destroyed by Cisco Systems, who bought it out, and I would say deliberately to ruin it, because it was pretty much uncensored and quite basic, but was populated by very, let's say, different thinking people to the mainstream. Uh, and we were sharing huge amounts of information, uh, not necessarily in such a subversive way, but just in a more sort of productive, proactive way, as people would do if they weren't being censored, without being nasty. There was, I didn't, very rarely did I see any abuse on there. It was just a great place. And it got shut down, pretty much. Without going into all the details of how that happened, uh, it was pretty much exactly the same sort of time that Facebook got big and people were sort of herded off into Facebook. And we've since seen, you know, some of the uh, reasoning behind that and the outcomes and the stifling of free speech and so on that's happened as a result of that. But back in those sorts of early naive times, I kind of thought, oh, well, the Internet is going to solve lots of problems. It, it allows the world to talk to each other. We, You know, all these barriers of space and time that we've had for thousands of years basically are gone. And over with enough time, focus and dedication, the people of the world can find the similarities, unite and um, be more friendly and maybe we'll stop wars and so on. What I didn't appreciate at the time was the extent to which the entire internet, including Facebook and Google and these companies, had literally been designed with the idea of being able to control the population, um, which was made clear in the video I recently uploaded from uh, James Corbett, uploaded to my 3Speak Online channel and it's on Eureka.org as well now and obviously on James's channel on uh, YouTube and his own website, uh, which basically exposes the history of Silicon Valley and how uh, the CIA seed-funded Facebook and Google and so on, and pretty much did that with the intention of being able to split apart the population, control certain elements, and pretty much control the thinking of the planet covertly. And I really suggest watching his documentary on that because it, it, it's, he's not just some like random guy in his bedroom kind of thing. He basically does a lot of research into this and talks to some of the world's leading experts in all these subjects. And he's been doing this for a long time and he knows what he's talking about. So given that this is all going on, what, what, you know, I've been, I've been prompted to re-evaluate my perspectives and, and to look at how my experience of the internet has changed the way that I deal with people. So to begin with, I was quite optimistic, you could say, and friendly to pretty much everyone on the internet, never harassed anyone. I still don't harass anyone, but um, was very open to listening to people in general. And, you know, would always put quite a lot of time into negotiating conversations with people so that we could maybe find the middle ground and have harmony and, you know, with all those best intentions in mind. Since then, over the years, I've realised that in many cases, the people I'm talking to, if they are even people, they could be um, AI, robots or whatever, but if they are people, they're, they're, a lot of them just don't have any interest in that middle ground, in achieving anything at all. They just seem to only have one mission, which is to disrupt and annoy. And then if you pick apart their position and show it to be false, they just go silent. So having gone through this a lot of times and realised that I basically just have to block a lot of profiles because there's just no point in, in conversing with them, um, you know, although I know that there's a lot of um, deliberate manipulation going on by groups I wouldn't want to be part of, let's say, behind the scenes, and I know they have a huge amount of resources and they're capable of doing a whole lot of things like this, it still allowed my perspective to be altered, th these experiences. So instead of being so um, completely open and friendly uh, and receptive to spending time with people as I once was. Now I, I, I kind of developed a bit of a perspective that's a bit more cynical and I'm kind of like, well, my experience has shown me that, yeah, there are lots of great people on the internet, but there's also, hard to put a percentage on it, but maybe in the realms of 40-50% of the people, um, not only do they not want to improve life or talk about anything in a useful way, they're actually trying to stop people doing that on some level, whether they realise it or not. So it really, yeah, I mean, it's it's literally twisted my angle on how I approach people in general because I, I haven't clearly defined in myself the difference between on and offline. And the reality is that offline, you know, most people aren't like that. I mean, there are definitely people like that, but the average people I meet anyway aren't like that. Uh, and I do treat them differently to how I treat the average person on the internet. But 
My point is that I'm now reevaluating and looking again in light of the evidence that's coming forward regarding the nature of these large social networks and how that how the extent to which they are manipulating people. Uh, I'm reevaluating how I treat people again and realizing, oh wow, I have actually changed the way I treat people offline a bit as well because of the negative experiences I've had online. So yeah, if I now reframe things and say, well, maybe a lot of the negative manipulation online or experiences I've had online is the result of manipulation, deliberately designed to divide and conquer the population and weaken us in general so that those entities, beings, groups um, who seek to control the world and build empires and so on basically have an easier job of doing that. Basically, they're, they're kind of enslaving the population by turning us against each other, by having us think that most people disrespect us in simple language. That's what I see is happening, and I'm fairly sure there are some fairly large groups involved in that. Um, so, given that that's the case, how can I adjust and correct for that and say, well, no, I'm not going to get involved with that anymore? And that's fairly simple. It's fairly straightforward. I just have to... Um, remember that that's likely to be happening and organize a bit more focused groups um, in terms of uh, being involved in groups that have good admins who don't stand for you know deliberate harassment and manipulation that's obvious and so on and there's other things I can do as well which some of them if I were to talk about them openly they wouldn't work so it's probably best that I don't but uh, most people would be able to figure, figure these approaches out they're not too difficult to understand but the key point I want to come on to here is The way that the social networks have been recently promoting the idea of censoring and, for example, Google Google, Google, Google had a um, document which was leaked a few months ago called The Good Censor, in which they made a case for being the good censor on the internet. The world needs a good censor because basically people can't handle freedom. They're not good. People are not good. They're too hate-filled. So if we give them freedom, they just ruin it for everyone. So we have to censor them. And obviously we're seeing these platforms definitely deplatforming certain political voices many people are being deplatformed even totally valid non-controversial people who are on groups who are just doing something that the establishment doesn't want them to do so given that they are doing this censorship and that's obviously part of their agenda i think it is important to point out that ultimately trolls don't want you having the position you're having for one reason or another they, they're either triggered by your position or the, or you or your what you stand for generally speaking and they're trying to shut you down so they're not pro-freedom generally speaking trolls are not freedom entities it's kind of like why the story of a troll living under the bridge is so relevant uh, stopping people crossing the bridge because um, that's what trolls do they're a barrier basically to freedom ultimately so he is logical on one level to say well we can't have that you know basically trolls are stopping freedom working but the solution is not to introduce more controls because then you become the troll control you become the control you're a con negative troll by doing the control so social networks that seek to control people are literally trolling everyone in the name of stopping trolls and that's exactly what we see the military industrial complex doing when it comes to warfare you know, it's like bombing for peace. It just doesn't work. And yet that's what they actually claim to be doing. They literally say we're the, like the world police bringing world peace to everyone and we're doing it down the barrel of a gun with the world's biggest military. It's never going to work, obviously, because introducing violence into a, into a situation, even in the name of stopping violence, basically it causes trauma, injury, harm, a desire for revenge and so on and the cycle continues and it may change form it may take a while to reoccur but it will reoccur because you haven't addressed the root causes you haven't healed the emotional and psychological issues involved so ultimately that's what we need on the internet we need not control but we need healing we need literal understanding of the psychology and emotions involved so that we cease our own manipulation of other people our own control of other people those people who we see as trying to control us and people we want to hear, let's say, instead of controlling them, we actually get to the root causes of why all of this is happening in the first place and address them at that level. And that's the only way that this is ever going to change and improve. So you can't, you can't solve the problems of the internet through algorithms and rules because 
The problems of the internet are the problems of humanity, ultimately, forced into a, an internet cable. And, you know, you can't solve human problems by forcing rules onto people. That's been tried for a very long time, and you may notice that it hasn't worked. Uh, because, basically, one of the problems humanity has is not being free enough. So, you can't solve that core root issue by removing freedom. It's impossible. It's the opposite of the answer. You have to do it coming from a position of allowing for freedom, complete respect for free will. When you've done that, then you can start to find new answers, new solutions, new angles, new perceptions, new experiences that actually then start to paint a broader picture and fill in the gaps regarding what was missed before. And hey presto, you've got a new, a new way of dealing with things. So that's what I'm very much behind. It's why I support the Steam blockchain. It's why I run Eureka.org, which is my own social network that I've built, which also runs the Steam blockchain, uh, which is, basically it's meant to be providing means for solving these issues. Now, it's not a professional medical service. It's not anything like that. It's not offering any guarantees regarding anything at all. It's basically just a form of social uh, space, which makes which is built on principles of balance, respect, freedom, free will, and so on, as opposed to corporate top-down control, exploitation, financial gains. And, um, you know, that's that's the sort of foundation of it. So if you've ever worked on the Steam blockchain or produced any content for the Steam blockchain, you know how it's possible for people to work together there without contracts. And, you know, the finances work out, and it's just a very liberating and enjoyable experience. How that compares to being in the corporate world is like night and day. They're complete opposites, usually. And that's similar to how um, Facebook, for example, is when compared to Eureka. Um, Eureka has absolute bare minimum rules, controls, and uh, aims to empower the, the community as much as possible, uh, genuinely, and has no data mining and so on. So, yeah, th there's lots of topics interrelated here. And obviously, it would take hours, in fact, seminars or, you know, talks and entire sessions lasting days really to go into all of these issues it's quite complicated but I just want people to to bear in mind that when we control and when we um, limit the freedom of people uh, whether it be via military political uh, or social engineering methods uh, we actually make the problems worse not better they may seem to get better temporarily because the one whack-a-mole that we've whacked on the head has disappeared but the other ones are going to pop up sure as sure as uh, the sun's going to come up tomorrow so yeah let's think a bit differently about this and uh yeah i look forward to seeing your comments and please do come and check out eureka.org uh, together basically we can solve this problem on the internet we don't have to relate rely on uh governments or big corporations to solve this this is a people problem so really people can solve it and that's what I recommend. So let's do it. Peace.